Welcome to Life Effects, the channel where I do stuff with effect. I can finally bring you the first episode of the Floating Islands of Houdini. I hope this will be a fun and interesting series. So let's jump right into it. Well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. It, it looks something like this. And here we are in Houdini with a clean project and as you can see I'm using the apprentice version. I will switch to the indie license at the latest to the end of this project because I want to render the final result in HD which is a restriction for the apprentice version. So the content for this first episode will be the creation process of the main island. At this point I worked a few times through Rohan Dalvi's workshop to make sure that I fully understand the way how he did it. The general approach will be fairly the same, but I'm going for a somewhat different design and I'm using a few different techniques. I will use the Vex language quite often and so I will use Wangles quite heavily to replace all the old point swaps. If you are new to Houdini, the last sentence makes no sense at all, but don't panic. I will do my best to explain everything I do and hopefully in a way so even a beginner can understand what I'm doing. But I will try to keep this as short as possible, so if there are any questions on the way, don't hesitate to post them in the comments. So to start it off, I'm creating a circle. There it is and I jump inside. I want this to be the ground plane for the island, so it has to be flat on the ground and it has to be a NURBS curve, so I can choose how many divisions the circle should have. Let's go with 25 and a quite bigger shape and slightly stretched on one side. So I go with 10 by 7. And as a next step I want to displace the several points, so we have a more natural look for the base layer. To achieve that I use the node point jitter and it allows me to displace all points on all three axes. But we want the points only to move on the X and the Z axis. So we start with X and only a bit on the Z. After you are satisfied with the shape we need to convert the curve back to polygons so we can split the edge into segments. You can do that with the resample node. With the length parameter we can tweak how far those segments are apart and we use those points to create a mesh from that initial circle. And the node for that is triangulate 2D. It connects all given points of a 2D geometry. But we have to refine the settings a bit. We need way more points than this. By decreasing the maximum area we get more and smaller triangles. At some point you will see these big spaces in between. That happens if you reach the maximum number of new points. So you might have to increase that. So now we have a lot more points we can work with, but we lost the fine details on the initial curve. But we can get that back if we gather the points before they triangulate into a group. So we create a group sub and place it before the triangulate. We call the group edge and tell the triangulate node to take that group as constraint. And now the original edge is taken into account. The shape is still flat, but we are going to change that now. I'm using a paint node for this, but instead of using normal color, I'm going to override it into my own attribute. And for that I'm using an attribute wangle. That's the first moment where I incorporate the VEX language. So I type f at weight equals 0.0, semicolon. F stands for float, which I could also type, but it would be the same. If I now go to the spreadsheet, I can see that all my points now have the attribute weight with the value of 0. I can now go to my paint shop and tell to override color with my own attribute. And when I now select the geometry I want to paint, I can now use a brush tool to paint on my geometry and saving the data inside my weight attribute. Let me just deactivate the specular lighting, much better. I want to paint with a very low intensity, so I switch the RGB values to 0.1 and change the mode to add. So the paint is visualized like a height map. The more color I add to the surface, 
the warmer it gets. Next I switch to a fixed value of 0.3 to create flat surface on that height. I want a big circle here and a smaller one here and then maybe a path that connects them both and leads off of the island. Then I want a border on these paths so I change back to add and 0.0. Keep in mind these are just my own artistic choices. You can do whatever the hell you want with your island. I also want an elevation where the drilled stones will be placed. Now I change to subtract for a deeper pathway. I don't know yet if I can do it, but maybe I can build a small stream here. And last but not least, I want the island to have a small hill. That looks fine for the start. So when I click on normals, you can see that they are all facing downwards. But since this is the top half of the island, I want to reverse that. That's more like it. Since we do not look at the paint shop anymore, we can't see our paint shop either. But it's all still there. If I take a look at the spreadsheet again, you can see that the weight attribute has a value, dependent on how we painted the matching points. Now we take the data and use it to elevate our island. And I wanted to do by using VEX expressions. So I create a new wrangle and the command that I now type will be executed for every point one after another. And I want to do something with the position data. So I type at p, which is the variable for the position, point y, which addresses only the y-axis of my position, equals at weight times 2. And there you have it. I think it looks quite good for the first drawing. But what I can do now is adjusting the paint job with immediate effect on my mesh. I just select the paint job, but keep the blue visibility flag on the last node. This makes it very easy to tweak the design later on. I add a bit more detail to the mesh in the hopes that it gets a more natural look. But the surface is a bit too smooth at the moment, so I want to do a bit more with the VEX expression. I'm going to add a random value to it dependent on the point number and an additional value. This is obviously too much, so I use another function around it to limit the possible values. You can do that with fit 0 run. The help says take the value in the range and shifts it to the new range. In other words, it takes my random value and makes a minimum of 0.1 and a max of 0.3 out of it. That looks a lot more chaotic, which is exactly what I wanted. I call this node displays, because that's what it does. In the end I will smoothen the surface again, so it's fine if it looks a bit spiky at the moment. But for now I deactivate the smooth, pull it to the side and make some space for yet another node. As you may have guessed, this is only the top half of the island, so I have to be able to combine this part with the lower part. So I create a group, deselect the basic selection and enable include by edge. Here I have the option of unshared edges. As you can see, that selects all vertices that are on the outside. I call the group top and I change it to points. Now I can manipulate these points specifically and I do that with another wrangle. I define the group and the command is fairly simple. It's at p point y 
equals zero. And it does exactly what it should do. It's putting the outer points to zero on the y-axis. But this shows how strong the displays was. So I go back to my paint soap and level the outside border to create a more natural slope. And that's it for the top half. And that was the first episode of my new series, The Floating Islands of Houdini. I hope this was useful for you and you're back next time.